In the news tonight, businesses welcome curfew rollback. FEMAT inequipped for severe cases. And vaccination better than natural immunization. From the studios of FBC Suva, Edwin Nunn. Fiji. The private sector has responded positively to news that the curfew will be pushed back by an hour to 7 p.m. The business sector is looking forward to having an additional hour to operate from today. Kuritan Dulala reports Prime Minister Vorengi Mbaini Marama has also confirmed that further rollbacks in curfew as we vaccinate more people. The government will keep pushing back the start of curfew if vaccination uptake continues to increase and at 60%, containment borders will be lifted. The shift of the one hour in curfew time, what it, it, it sends a positive signal out in terms of businesses being able to now open more normally. The Prime Minister has confirmed the curfew will continue to be scaled back at every 10% progression rate for full vaccination. The Suva Retailers Association says members will review these changes to suit operations. We know most of our workers were returning home late due to traffic, uh, so we welcome the increase uh, uh, making the cafe a bit later. Uh, as for the opening of the shops, I think it will be a more like a wait and uh, see. We'll monitor for a few days and then uh, the all shop owners will decide how to go about it. Yeah. The other thing that we noted was the planned progressive reduction in the curfew hours where you know as we reach certain milestones of vaccination such as you know 40 percent and 50 percent and 60 percent and progressive reduction in the curfew hours so that that all was a very positive message at 70 percent full vaccination the curfew will start at 10 p.m and once we fully vaccinate 80 percent of our target population the curfew will start at 11 p.m the end of curfew to remain at 4 a.m Dulala, FBC News. About $93.6 million will be paid out to 260,000 people under the government's unemployment benefit scheme. Minister for Economy, A.S. Sayed Kayum, has this afternoon also confirmed that 85,000 applications have been declined. Koroi Tandulala has been following developments and joins us live now. Koroi, how soon will the first round of payments be complete? Vinaka Edwin, the Minister for Economy, Ayasai Kayum, says that 345,000 Fijians had applied for the $360 government unemployment assistance. And while giving an update on, on this assistance this evening, he also raised some concerns and issues that they were facing during the vetting process and also with the disbursement of funds. He noted that some of the applicants would tell students and have been receiving their allowances there were other applications as well from civil servants and there were applications that were filed as well from those who are ineligible for the assistance he also made an interesting uh, um, point this evening where there was an issue where si just over six hundred and twenty thousand dollars was incorrectly paid out to digicel customers um, especially to those outside of Vitilevu. now these customers were ineligible for the assistance and since then they have been able to reverse the process uh, Said Kayum also clarified for those outside of Vitilevu and are in the formal sector and are also eligible for the $360 government unemployment assistance. However, for their case, they have to file their application through the Fiji National Provident Fund. Now, the ministry is also hoping to open the application for the second round quite early to allow Fijians to be able to put their information in quite early uh, earlier on. And the second round of assistance will be for three months and it will cater for the month of November, December, as well as January of next year as well. Edwin. Minaka Kuroi. The FEMAT Field Hospital is not well equipped to handle COVID patients who reach critical level. Head of FEMAT, Dr. Luke Nasendra, says these patients require organ support and have to be referred to the Colonial War Memorial Hospital. Since July, FEMAT has had up to 80% occupancy, but numbers are decreasing, Kritika Kumar reports. The head of FEMAT has highlighted that they can only look after moderate to severe patients. But if uh, they do get uh, very sick, we then send them over to CWM hospital because that is where the capacity for looking after critical cases is. 75% of severe cases that came into FEMAT have been able to recover thanks to early identification and treatment. 
what we do, we came up with a, something like a scoring system to help us in identifying the level of care that um, uh, a person needs. With that uh, scoring system, it uh, gives us clear direction on where that person needs to be looked at. The ministry is targeting resources towards early detection, monitoring and care of persons with COVID-19 who are at higher risk. Those who are really high risk, we're having a system of going to actually see them with our eye. And those who are really, really high risk, we're actually putting them in the PMET and actually making sure that uh, they don't become too sick, so that we can start a treatment uh, quickly. There are about 38 patients admitted at the PMET hospital in Suva. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. COVID immunity from vaccination is more effective than natural immunity achieved after infection. This is why medical experts make strong emphasis on complete vaccination. Christiana Uluwai reports. Medical experts say antibodies developed after a COVID infection will not be enough to protect individuals from getting infected twice. That if you've had a very mild or asymptomatic infection, then many people may have... Uh, very low levels of antibodies that they form. Fiji Medical Association says this is why Fijians should complete their vaccination cycle. Also the natural immunity after you get an infection, it tends to you know, diminish over time much quicker than a vaccine. Vaccination will minimize the possibility of getting infected with other variants of the coronavirus. You only get immunity, and again, the immunity may not last very long, to the variant uh, of the coronavirus that you got infected with. The Ministry of Health says that natural immunity should not be relied upon and those infected already should pursue their second dose once they've recovered from COVID-19. Christiana Uluwai, FBC News. Now to our COVID-19 update for tonight. Fiji recorded 303 new COVID-19 infections for the period ending 8 a.m. yesterday. Of the new cases, 185 are from the Western Division, 33 are from the Central Division and 85 from Kandavu. The Health Ministry also recorded five new deaths for the period of August 19th and to up to yesterday. One death was from the Central Division and four were from the Western Division. Fiji has recorded 43,527 cases since April this year. There are now 19,097 active cases with 23,809 recoveries in total. The COVID-19 death toll stands at 436. The vaccination campaign also continues. As of yesterday, 543,318 people or 92.6% of the population have received their first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine. 234,714 people or 40% have received the second dose. The five most vaccinated areas include Mba, Rewa, Nanunga and Naitasiri which have achieved 100% first jabs administered. Next is Nandi. And Christina Mbulivo from Tadirua Six Miles is amongst those who have been jabbed. Up ahead, stranded students miss home. And minibus operators look to borders reopening. Welcome back. Prime Minister Voreng Mbainimarama is pleading with villagers to allow health teams to enter and conduct COVID-19 vaccination. Speaking during Radio Fiji 1's Nonda i Lalakai program, Mbainimarama says over 400 Fijians have succumbed to the virus and this can be stopped if we all get the jab. Sanya Niboila reports. As vaccination numbers gradually rise, Bainimarama is calling anti-vaxxers to get the jab before it's too late. Anti-vaxxers should understand that they will not die if they get the jab. And not getting the jab will increase the risk of them getting the virus, at the same time putting their loved ones at risk. The Prime Minister adds meeting the vaccination target will be a new dawn for Fiji and the government will do whatever it takes to achieve it. Frontliners continue to work hard to get all eligible Fijians get vaccinated and the government will continue to support the health ministry to eradicate COVID-19, get our children back to school 
and get Fiji COVID-19 free once again. Baini Marama is adamant that Fiji will reach the 80% target population in the next two months, and this will get us on the road to normalcy. Saini Animboila, FBC News. Five months away from family in the Lao group has made 15 students of Mode Secondary School susceptible to various psychological issues. These students, four teachers and four parents who travelled for a cricket competition have been stranded in Suva since April. Josiah Nanunga reports targeted projects and activities keep the students engaged during these trying times. A traditional anthem that may sound soothing but one could never imagine how hard it is for these students to be away from their families for months. Keeping a close watch on their psychological well-being has been a priority for these teachers in recent months. Invite a few uh, pastors to come around on, uh, on Sundays just to carry out uh, counseling and uh, advice for our students eh? so that they are uh, settled and they are well settled at the moment. Uh, they even they really enjoy that time in Hitilibu. 18-year-old Asimate Mawadiono says she misses her family back in the village but looks forward to receiving her first job next month, a ticket to return home. During this lockdown period, I have learned so much. I get to know activities that are normally undertaken by men. This is a great time as well for us to share knowledge and ideas with classmates and teachers for seven days straight. I hope that everything eases soon. I really want to go back home and reunite with my family members, but I'm glad I'm keeping updated with all the worksheets issued by the ministry. The students, teachers and five parents are currently being housed in Kinoya, and the education ministry had been in touch with the principal of the school should they require any assistance. Chosaya Nanunga, FBC News. Not being able to service their normal routes from Suva to Lotoka has taken away a huge chunk of income for minibus drivers. However, the recent announcement of curfew hours changing and a possible rollback of further restrictions, including borders being lifted as vaccination numbers progress, has given these breadwinners a glimmer of hope. Dina Reese reports. Minivan drivers are urging people to get vaccinated as this will be able to give many people, including themselves, their jobs back. The only thing most of us want is to provide for our families. Let's get vaccinated so we can go back to working, traveling and hopefully soon reunite with our loved ones. Despite the setback of border closure and being unable to make trips to the West, minivan operators have broadened their network and made the most of any employment opportunities. With the restriction in place, our company, PT Mini, managed to secure contact with Paradise Beverage and we cater for the transportation of staff to and from work during their shift. This is now how we aim for our families. Most of these drivers who are from the Western Division are also looking forward to getting back to serving the Queen's Highway and for some to reunite with their families. Lena Reese, FBC News. Coming up in World News, Auckland cases spike and Australian COVID measures to remain. Despite the obstacles presented by the pandemic, more businesses are starting to show interest in investing in new buildings and retail outlets in and around the capital city. Suva City Council Chair Sikeli Tukundundua says applications are being received as development continues in Suva. Sainiani Boila reports. The Suva City Council has given the green light to a number of applications, including one for six-story building in Sese. We've been very um, fortunate that uh, uh, business people are still having confidence in uh, setting up their business in Suva. As uh, now we've got um, one of the investors from the West who's uh, now putting up a six-story building in uh, Sese with a supermarket as his core business. and. Uh, up Department and offices on the top. As businesses overcome a sluggish economy, the Suva Retailers Association expects more members to start reopening, operating under COVID safe measures. Now most of the shops are opening up. 70% of the shops have opened the doors for walking customers to help them. 
the protocols are in place. There's no two way about it. You have to follow the protocols. 99% of the businesses in Suba report their employees are fully vaccinated and the association expects more members will get their businesses back on track soon. Sainian Mboila, FBC News. Fiji Care has been recognized by the Insurance Asia 2021 Awards with two awards. It has won the new insurance product of the year Fiji and the Digital Insurance Initiative of the year Fiji. The Insurance Asia Award recognizes companies who have successfully launched innovative solutions and have delivered exceptional value to their stakeholders. The new insurance product of the year award recognizes Fiji Care's innovative and affordable bundle micro insurance for low income earners in partnership with the Fijian government and the Pacific Financial Inclusion Program. The Digital Insurance Initiative of the Year Award recognizes the enhancement of our services through technological based solutions, including the Fiji Care mobile application. Here, the local exchange rates are set early this morning. The Fiji dollar had a slow start to the week as it lost ground against the Chinese yuan, US greenback, New Zealand dollar, euro, and the Japanese yen. It gained against the Aussie dollar and the PNG Kina. Declines across the board on the commodities market. Crude oil dropped to close at $62 a barrel. Gold closed at $1,779 per ounce. And silver was down at $22.95 per ounce. And we now join Sharon from HFC Bank to give us the latest figures from the money market. A quick update on our local South Pacific Stock Exchange. More than 21,000 shares valued over $79,000 were traded in 30 transactions last week. Following these trades, the market value recorded an increase of 1.14% and concluded the week at $3.12 billion. In currencies, the U.S. dollar gave up some ground at the end of last week, but it's the strongest currency across the board. The better performance of equities and bouncing government bond yields put a cap on greenbacks demand. The main themes which continue to determine market sentiment into this new week is the spread of the coronavirus Delta variant, its possible effect on the economic recovery and U.S. policymakers speeding up tapering talks. Market participants are eagerly awaiting for the Federal Reserve Chair's comment on the matter at the Jackson Hole Symposium, which will take place by the end of this week. And I will bring you more on that during the week. But for now, that's all from your HFC Bank. Finaka. Many rural areas rarely have any systematic waste management structure. A family in Nakama outside Lambasa has invested in a home biogas system that will save tons of waste and produce clean, renewable energy for cooking. Eleanor Turangaiview has the details. <music> It's a practical solution to the everyday home waste management issue. All organic kitchen waste from this home will be fed into this system to produce cooking gas for Losavati Rangate and her family. I've used it and I'm happy knowing I will be getting free cooking gas every day just by feeding the system with food waste. It's very clean and efficient. The home by gas system not only solves the waste management problem, it also improves health and benefits the environment. We've always cooked over the open fire and we inhale the smoke and we go cut trees for firewood. Now we don't have to do that anymore. Rangate is the first in Madhuwata to invest in this system that's fast becoming common in rural communities in Fiji and the Pacific given its environmental impact. We do support this initiative by the uh, Pacific Grow, and uh, there's a reason called a form partnership with these guys in uh, uh, making this available to the customers and farmers in North. Uh, we all understand the climate change impact of climate change, right? so these things uh, uh, removes uh, eliminates any em em amount of carbon dioxide emission into the environment. The home biogas system can supply two to three hours cooking gas for up to 15 years and also produces liquid fertilizer for backyard farming. Eleanor Turangaiview, FBC News. And that is the latest from my end, but coming up after the break, patrolling on horseback to assist police. Stay with us.
Welcome back. McDonald's paper packaging is going green. With our borders expected to reopen by December, Tourism Minister Fayaz Koya says given the fluid situation, it's difficult to ascertain the number of workers who will return. Koya says they will also need to consider those who found other means of income or started their own business during the COVID period. He adds many have gone into agriculture and they may not return. We'll also need to consider uh, uh, the time it may take to re-employ and retrain employees and the, the structure of the industry of uh, industry businesses now along the entire tourism supply chain. So this will be a gradual process. I mean, as you can understand, it's, it's, it's a new way of doing business too. So it's a bit of retraining that will need to go on. In an effort to help police curb the increasing numbers of curfew breaches, a few horse owners have taken the bold initiative to patrol a few parts of Nandi. The horse patrol initiative launched at the Mulo Mulo community post is a first of its kind with 30 people tasked to carry out the job. Felipe Naikaso has more. The horse patrol will reach areas police are not able to stop attempts to cross containment zones and prevent other criminal activities. Uh, it's a big, big area. We have uh, a big population this side. And these are uh, a lot of roads are going through all these roads. So almost uh, the heaps or the robberies just all using this just national highland route. Olympian Melin Darnalangi is also part of the Crime Prevention Committee, keen to play his part in keeping everyone safe. These civilians who will be gathering intelligence and raising awareness will work closely with police. We initially wanted 20, 20 horses in operation to about 30 that will actually manage the whole areas and settlements as we got in um, Solovi, Mangani and Nassau. So we cover a very uh, big, uh, big area. Safety COVID-19 protocols are also being observed by those who are out patrolling. As we know that Nawaka and Nusori Highland areas, it is a rough terrain. There are areas where there is access only by horses. They are also planning to have horse patrols for the whole of Nandi. Philip and Aikaso, FBC News. And let's join Jamie now for tonight's sports update. Vinakayan, good evening and sports tonight. The Y plans for future. And para athletes so hope to inspire others. This and more coming up. Dual Olympic gold medalist Jerry Tuwai has mapped his plans for life after rugby. The Fiji Sevens captain promises he will continue applying his trade locally even after he decides to hang up his boots. Tyler Materukula with the details. Here's two way. Having a hand in ensuring that Sevens rugby continues to thrive in the country is his ultimate goal. Try, try to help the youngsters, uh, try to provide academies to help uh, people, to help kids who want to pursue rugby. But Tuai has plans to expand outside of the rugby field. Not just rugby, that balls and stuff, uh, sports that changes people. Uh, we get myself, he changes me a lot. Uh, not just uh, physically, but uh, mentally and uh, spiritually. Yeah. The tank has also made up his mind on what to do next. Uh, for sure, I'll keep playing for Fiji. There is interest from the Fijian Rua, and I'm still juggling my mind around that. While it's unclear when Tuai's academy will be set up, one thing we are certain of is that the Nipi skipper is not going anywhere. Tale Materukula, FBC Sports. As the countdown begins for the Tokyo Paralympics, anticipation is growing for Fijians Yosefo Rakesa and Inosi Matea preparing for their debut. This will be the first time Fiji will have two participants at the Games who have qualified on merit and they are both aiming to do the country proud. Karla Nitavi has more. Representing the country is a milestone achievement for Inosi Matea. It's a mixed event and everyone, everyone has prepared for this game, so 
it would be nice if you win a goal but yeah it's gonna be tough I, I couldn't say I would win goal but for me it is a big thing to represent my own country Matea and Iosefo Rakesa are hoping that achieving their goals despite their disabilities will inspire others a disabil uh, person with disability as well uh, I've found the ability for me to participate in sport. So for the young ones there with disability, there is ability for you guys to find something to do. To achieve. You're passionate about something, you must work hard for it and not be discouraged. The Paralympic Games will kick off next Tuesday. Karleni Tavi, FBC Sports. The Pacific Games Council is expecting some setbacks in the upcoming Pacific Mini Games as a few participating countries continue to be affected by the global pandemic. Although there is no indication of the Games being suspended or postponed, a way forward will be discussed at its annual general meeting in November. Venina Rakautonga has more. Population seen. A decision to go ahead with the Pacific Mini Games next year is still yet to be made. The athletes in those countries are finding it difficult to find uh, uh, not time but the opportunity to train and prepare themselves. Uh, in, in some of the countries there is to be no sporting activities and that's what's happening in the present time. Fiji Association of Sports and National Olympic Committee Chief Executive Lorraine Ma says the Olympic Games in Japan has set the platform a standard on organizing a huge sporting event during the current crisis. We showed in Japan that it can be done. The venues were open for these competitions and it's just a matter of um, making sure that the all the countermeasures uh, are in place, but not only in place, but observed. It's like every time at, at, in, in Japan, it wasn't just a matter of going and competing. The athletes had very stringent um, procedures. Nine spots will be part of the Pacific Mini Games in June next year. Venina Rakautonga, FPC Sports. A try by Mikaele Ravalawa was not enough as St. George Illawarra's chances of playing NRL finals this year slipped away with a loss to the Roosters in round 23 last night. The Roosters led 14-0 late in the first half, then had to endure a three-try comeback from the Red V, who claimed the lead midway through the second half before the Chooks produced a stunning four-try burst to win 40 points to 22. In another NRL match, Fiji Mbati fullback Marcelo Montoya's try for the Warriors was not enough as they went down in a nail-biting 24-22 loss to the Brisbane Broncos last night. Romelu Lukaku scored his first ever Chelsea goal almost a decade after his debut as the Blues deservedly beat Arsenal 2-0 in the English Premier League. Lukaku, who was at Chelsea as a teenager, started at the Emirates after his £97.5 million signing from Inter Milan and looks to have given the Blues an ominous new dimension. Chelsea. Meanwhile, Manchester United failed to build on its opening day demolition of Leeds United as Southampton earned a fully deserved one-all draw at St. Mary's. Sayed Gnabry scored twice as Bayern Munich beat Curl three goals to two in an entertaining Bundesliga encounter. Robert Lewandowski was also on the score, sh score sheet for Bayern, but the champs had to work hard for maximum points. In play of the day, Wojciech Szczesny had a night to forget after gifting Udinese two goals, leaving Juventus with a two-all draw in the Serie A. While all the talk before the match was about Cristiano Ronaldo being on the bench for Juventus, the goalkeeper had to endure a tough night. In our quirky sport of the day, Buskashi, an ancient game of Central Asia which has become the national sport of Afghanistan, the sport sees horse-mounted players attempt to place a goat carcass in a goal. That's it from Sports Tonight. Coming up in Weird and Wonderful, more reasons to take pictures of your pet cat. Details after the break.
Partly cloudy with brief showers experienced over eastern parts of the larger islands and the eastern division, mainly fine weather prevailed elsewhere. Now to the west, mainly fine over most places except for some brief showers over the coral coast, eastwards from Pacific Harbour to Suva, a few cloudy periods but all in all a sunny day, expect cool temperatures tonight. In the north, brief showers over Sabu Sabu, otherwise fine conditions over the whole island. And the places we are checking out today are Lotoka, Nosori and Sabu Sabu. Nosori had a manageable 77% humidity. At sea, southeast winds 20 to 25 knots, rough seas. Turning to the tides, the next high tide is at 12.42 a.m. tomorrow with low tide at 7.10 a.m. Sunrise is at 6.23. For tomorrow, cloudy periods with brief showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands, Lao and Lomaiviti group, elsewhere mainly fine weather, cool nights. The outlook for Wednesday, more of the same conditions. And our shot of the day sent by Alfaz when Suva is blessed with a sunny day. In Fijian Pulse, we ask, are you pleased with the revised curfew hours? happy uh, because uh, it gives me ample time to do my shopping. Uh, during uh, the previous uh, few hours I was, I was unable to do shopping. Now it's, uh, we can do shopping and then go home on time. Um, I, no, I don't think so because it's really frustrating. I don't have to rush back home and I will have ample time to go back home and relax with my family. Cat owners who love to take pictures of their furry friends now have a new excuse to pull out their smartphones and take a snapshot. It may actually help the cat. In recapping our main stories, businesses welcome curfew rollback, unemployment assistance payments ahead of schedule and vaccination better than natural immunization. For these stories and others, tune in to our sister radio station Gold FM. To our poll question, last week we asked should commercial banks relook at lending rates most 55% answered yes. This week we are asking, are you confident that Fiji will meet its October vaccination deadline? Visit our FBC News website to take part and send us newsworthy pictures and videos fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via social media. You can also download our FBC app to keep updated with the very latest in news and sports and listen to our six radio stations live. That's your news this evening. I'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, stay safe. Mother Mother.